Hello and welcome to that shooting show. My name's Steve Anderson. I am your very humble host. Uh, some of you got the opportunity to hear this podcast before in the uh, Mickey Mouse huffing helium mode, a uh, little audio glitch there that I was not aware of. <laughs> and then the text messages start rolling in. Hey, this isn't great. And I thought about it and I actually reached out to the great Arik Levy, who is the arbiter of audio quality and he said you got to get rid of that and I knew he was going to say that and I knew that it was the right thing to do so here we go for take two once again a proud service of Walther Firearms in any speed of dialogue or helium huffing it is the finest production firearm on the planet and that of course is the Walther PDP steel frame Jay Slater the world's greatest revolver shooter got to sample the PDP steel frame right next to his beloved Ruger revolver and came to the conclusion that the PDP is superior in every way particularly in ammunition capacity so there you have it from the world's greatest revolver shooter the PDP is superior in ammunition quantity to a Ruger revolver and that's pretty much what you need right I mean you're looking for a new gun, uh, limited optics, carry optics, your number one question is, does this hold more rounds than a Ruger revolver? And the answer is yes. And the other answer is, if you don't like it for any reason, that'll be your problem, but not really because Walther will take it back from you, give you a full refund, and then send your Walther PDP steel frame to its rightful owner. And that is, of course, J. Beal. So, also Targets USA remanufactures the finest competition ammunition you can dispense from a Freedom Seed dispenser. That's not right at all. Targets USA manufactures the finest <laughs> steel targetry on the planet. CR Speed makes the finest gun handling gadgetry you can wrap around your waist. And of course, the AMG Lab.com Command Assistant Timer is the finest timer on the planet because it puts the times right into the tablet hunters hd gold is the only eyewear that i wear outdoor dynamics now that's the one that's the one that does the fine freedom speed dispensing from the finest freedom seeds you can dispense from a freedom seed dispenser and of course shooting sports innovations is a lot to type because there is a lot to see so Always want to remind you, you can always go to andersonshooting.com, click on upcoming classes and see where we're going to be and what we're going to be doing. Uh, we got some classes coming up with Joey Sourland. You can check those out. We're going to be all over the country in the next few months. You can check those out. And we will have an online mental management for you in August here very soon. So the reason why you are here, you got a big match coming up. We're in the final days leading up to this match. Okay, you don't have a lot of time between now and the match, but that's fine because you don't need a lot of time. You just need to do some things. Okay, you are not going to get faster between now and Care Optics Nationals, but the good news is you don't need to. You just need to get access to the speed that you already have. You're not going to get more accurate technically, meaning you're not going to. Uh, well, we well, we got to be careful how we talk about this. Most of you going to Care Optics Nationals are in a place where accuracy is a decision as opposed to a skill. In the beginning, accuracy is a skill. Later, it becomes a decision. That is where most of you are. And that can be improved between now and then. What can't be improved is technical accuracy, which is not really a problem. Um, because you already have the technical accuracy you need in terms of a skill to be successful at this match. The first thing you've got to do is to control the imprints to your self-image leading up to this match. Those of you that have graduated mental management, you know that the self-image is the, the thing that allows access to subconscious skill. So if you're shooting below your level of skill in competition, that is 100% a self-image issue. And that's just all there is to it, right? If you're beating yourself up in training, you're beating yourself up at the match, you're damaging your self-image, you are literally denying yourself access to your hard-earned training. That's what you're doing. Now, I know you may not believe me. Oh, being hard on myself is how I got so good where I'm at. Well, maybe, maybe not. But a poor self-image will allow poor access to subconscious skill. So positive imprints, every thought, every opinion, everything you say about your shooting needs to be productive. And the interesting thing about being positive is 
it can at times be difficult to be positive. And if that word has a negative connotation for you, replace it with the word productive. It may be difficult for you to have positive thoughts, but you can have productive thoughts. And if you like the word positive, that's fine too. But if you're one of these type A people that think positive thoughts are like a participation trophy, you know, a big old second place pat on the bottom, well, okay, change it to productive. Now, in terms of live fire, match mode is the only thing you should be practicing if you're going to the range for live fire between now and a big match, right? This match is, I believe, three or four days away at this point, something like that, two or three days, pretty close. Many of you are going to be on the road already, right? So you may not have another live fire practice opportunity, but if you do, match mode is the only thing you need to be practicing. Set up a stage, walk it. Shoot it for score, change it. Set up a stage, walk it, shoot it for score, change it. If you're a mental management graduate, you need to be on your flow chart 100%. Okay, particularly if you have a track record of great performance sticking to that flow chart. And if you've been sticking to it for very long, you will have a good track record of sticking to it. The only time people get frustrated about mental management is when they deviate from it. Right? I had a guy call me one time. He goes, man, this stuff's not working. And I said, okay, are you taking the flow chart to the match? He says, what flow chart? I said, are you working in your journal? What journal? Are you running your directive affirmation? What directive affirmation? So he said, well, it wasn't that mental management wasn't working. It's that he wasn't working mental management. And if you haven't done the mental management class, you have a simpler process Analyze, strategize, memorize, visualize, surrender to your eyes. And we'll come back to that in a minute. So as you're shooting these stages in practice or at the match, there are three ways that you are going to evaluate your performance. And they're very simple. It's either great, okay, or needs work. A great run is going to be a clean run with 90 to 95% of the points and minimal Unscored errors or zero unscored errors should be a a subconscious stage plan and a subconscious performance. If you got that, it's a great stage and your time will be competitive within your division. So if you're the first shooter and you shoot stage one in 12 seconds and you're in a class and you had a subconscious stage plan and a subconscious performance, that will be a competitive time for a class according to your level of skill. So that's a great run. You need to internalize that great run and reinforce what you did. If your run was okay, the hallmark of okay is some extra shots, corrected errors, minor unscored errors. It's usually usually makeup shots. Turn a run from great to okay. And you you can have a few of those, right? If it's okay, we'll acknowledge that. We'll talk about the correction here in a minute. If it needs work, that's because we have uncorrected scored errors. Penalties, primarily. Now, if you're above, ah, for sure, if you're into A class, a delta on an open target is pretty close to a scored error because it's so close to a mic. So if you're leaving deltas on open targets, that needs work. You're only getting one point for that shot, and it's perilously close to a mic. So that needs work. And what you want to do, if it's a great run, reinforce what you did specifically to make it a great run. There's something you did to get a great run. You need to know what that is. You should already know what produces a great run. But when it happens at the match, reinforce what you did, not what happened. If you puff out your chest and say, I burned that sucker down. Well, that's great. But that by itself is not duplicable. What did you do? To burn it down. You probably got a subconscious stage plan and saw what you needed to see for every shot. So reinforce that. If the run is okay or it needs work, identify the immediate correction or solution. And here's the good news. The only trouble you are likely to have as a serious competitor at this match or any other match is a temporary lapse of visual patience. Okay? Temporary lapse of visual patience. The good news is that's the most likely problem you're going to have. The great news is it is the easiest thing to fix between uh, stage one and two and maybe the only thing you can fix between stage one and two. But isn't it great to know 
that the most likely problem is the easiest one to fix. And the best way to think of a stage when you get done is next time I will. Next time I will do exactly the same thing. I'll get a subconscious stage plan. I'll see what I need to see. Next time I will put the dot in the middle of the target. Next time I will see what I need to see before the gun goes off. And if, if somebody wants to get you talking about a mistake, you don't need to answer that question. If they say, ooh, 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 how'd you get a mic on stage one? You can say, next time I will put the dot in the middle of the target. And that'll fix it. And you need to fix it quick. Because the wheels fall off. Everybody's been there. The wheels fall off when you make a mistake and you reinforce the mistake by thinking about it and talking about it. Okay, so a mic at nationals is one event in that day. Talking about it makes it two events. Telling somebody else about it makes it three events. So now this thing that has happened is happening again and is now becoming normal. Okay, your self-image doesn't give you what you want. It gives you what is normal for you to do. And if you're making a mistake and reinforcing a mistake, it is becoming normal for you to make that mistake. See how that works? It's becoming normal. It's becoming who you are. But if you have a great run and you reinforce what you did pretty specifically, then that becomes another event. And it's becoming normal for you to have great runs by doing something that you have defined and know how to do. Okay, as we get closer to the match, you should have already done this, but we need to do it now. Set an objective within your control. What are you going to do at this match that is within your control? When in your class, when in your division, well, they're all shooting the same division, but when in your class or when in this match is not 100% within your control. But what is within your control is your performance. And self-image always gives you the performance that you expect. It doesn't always give you the result that you expect. But it does give you the performance that you expect. So let's set an objective for your performance. There's really two things I need you to do. Get a subconscious stage plan with positive imprints. And then have a singular focus on vision. And if you're anxious about the match, if you're feeling pressure, well, let's talk about pressure real quick. So pressure is stress caused by the perceived importance of the event. And the only thing pressure can ever do is amplify what you are thinking or feeling, right? So if you're feeling pressure and anxiety is being amplified or fear is being amplified, then that's not going to be good. But if you're feeling pressure and you have decided to get a subconscious stage plan and you have decided to have a singular focus on vision when the timer goes off, you're going to get a much better performance and pressure will amplify that objective. Now, I don't think a clean match is a great objective because you will very likely under try. You'll slow down to get your hits. All alphas, for example, is not a great objective going into the match. If you shoot all, if you come out of this match with 100% alphas, it's going to be incredibly slow. Now, you're less likely to make an error. And the irony of that is if you decide to shoot 100% alphas, you're very likely to hit uh, no shoots. So I want, you to, I want you to shoot parcels in the center of the available target area for risk reward and for hit factor. Okay, I'm, on, I'm not going to argue with you about it. I'm just going to tell you that every single time we've tested it, I take shooters of all different skill levels and I give them three partial targets. I say, okay, I want you to snipe some alphas for me. If they can avoid hitting a no shoot, which rarely happens, they usually whack a no shoot. But even if they can avoid it, the hit factor is always higher when they shoot in the center of the available target area. Okay, so the objective within your control needs to be very specifically a subconscious stage plan with positive imprints and a singular focus on vision. So how do we create positive imprints during the stage planning process? When you arrive at a stage, your opinion of your ability to execute that stage is pretty neutral. Unless the stage has something that you know you're great at or something that you're afraid of, your opinion of your ability to, to execute that stage is, is pretty neutral. Now, you can start this process by reinforcing your ability to execute every stage. 
That's a great way to start. Hey, I can execute every stage at this match. Christian Seiler thinks that. Jay Beal thinks that. Eric Grafell thinks that. All the guys at the top think that. They're not afraid of anything because they've trained for everything. But you need to control your opinion of these stages from the moment that you see them. Okay, I was working with a very high-level shooter who confided in me that when he got to nationals last year, his very first opinion was, I hate these stages and they are dumb. Well, if you hate the stages and you think they're dumb, you're not going to shoot them very well. And that's what happened. Now, the whole thing wasn't caused by negative imprints, but it was definitely exacerbated. And you don't got to believe me, right? You can go back in your career. When you have loved the stage and loved your stage plan, you've shot very well. When you have hated the stage or hated your stage plan, you haven't shot very well. So control that. Why, what if my stage plan sucks? It only sucks because you think it sucks, right? Your job is to create a stage plan that minimizes the amount of time spent not shooting and create positive imprints on it. Doing the things that you know how to do, right? If you can take a 12 yard partial on the move, put it in your plan. If that's not something that you know you can do, nationals ain't the place to try it. Okay? So the objective within our control, a subconscious stage plan with positive imprints and a singular focus on vision. If you have these two, the, those two components and you see what you need to see, that will govern your speed correctly and you can avoid the conscious control of speed, which is the epitome of under trying and over trying. And if you think you want to control your speed, go back and look at your career, right? When have you had great results going fast, consciously going fast? When have you had great results consciously slowing down to get your hits? That's not top performance. Slowing down to get your hits will produce a slightly better result, but it will not be top performance. Rush, try, hurry, trying to go fast will cause costly errors and will take you out of the running for a good placement within your classification, all right? So... Now, if you're a mental management graduate and you've been working in your journal, it's super easy right now. All you got to do is go back in your journal and read about your best performances. Oh, oh, you haven't been keeping a journal? Oh, you don't know how to do it? Oh, you didn't follow my advice and write down your best performances? Then you don't have anything to study. But if you have been keeping a journal, if you have been documenting what you've learned and what conditions exist when you're shooting really well, then you literally have a textbook to study for the test. You have written a book about your best shooting. All you have to do is do a quick, it's an open book exam for crying out loud, right? If you got a journal, you can literally read a textbook that you have written about how to have your best performance. And that brings up the next question. How much would you pay? How much would you pay for a book about your best shooting and how to duplicate it on demand? You'd probably pay a lot, but you can't buy it with money. You can only buy it with minutes. The minutes that you invest in working in that journal to create a book about your best shooting will give you a textbook that you can study at any time to know what you need to do to have your best results. You can see your best matches and stages, and you can find the commonalities. Now, if you haven't been keeping a journal, I want you to go back and think about your best match. Best match you ever had. You'll find that you knew the stages very well. You'll find you weren't thinking a lot. And you'll find that you weren't worried about the results. You either knew you were going to win. You knew you were going to finish well. You weren't worried about the results. It doesn't mean that you didn't care about the results. It means that you weren't worried about the results. That's the place you got to get to. If you're worried about the results, you are very likely to undertry or overtry. Okay? Subconscious stage plan, minimal conscious thought. You see a trend here? Do you see a trend? Right? I shoot my best when I'm thinking about nothing. Well, that's fine, but try to do that on stage one. Go, go, go try to think about nothing. You're not going to be able to do it. Certainly not, certainly not reliably. So we encourage you to pick one thing to think about as you get closer to shooting to get those number of thoughts closer to zero. If zero is the right number and we can't get to zero, then one is the next best thing. 
something visual. I will see what I need to see. Center the dot, call the shot. Pick a spot for every shot. Red on brown, go to town. Something that controls the speed visually, not consciously, but visually. That way you're fast when you need to be fast and you're patient when you need to be patient. Because I don't want you making those decisions behind the gun when you're shooting for score. It's too much conscious thought. You're very likely to overtry the fast bits and you're very likely to undertry the, the more cautious bits. And we don't want that. If the conscious mind is consciously controlling speed, you cannot have a subconscious performance and that's pretty much a scientific fact. Now, to avoid worrying about the results, you can pre-accept them. Hey, it is what it is. Or, I'll do well. Right? The first nationals I went to, I set a goal of a clean match. And I for sure undertried. I for sure slowed down to get my hits. I didn't know any better. I thought if I had a clean match, I could get in the top 16. And I came pretty close. I had a mic on my very last stage because I saw the checkered flag and I stepped on the gas nine shots before the end of the match. And I think I came in 21st or something that year. The first year I was on the super squad. Boy, talk about pressure. Brand new grandmaster, just wrote a dry fire book. First open nationals, welcome to the super squad. I literally thought that USPSA was playing a joke on me. I was on the super squad for both nationals that year. Super squad for open, super squad for production. Now, curiously, I was not worried about the results of the production match. I only shot it because it was there at the same range in the same week. And I'll never forget, the first stage had two Texas stars at 15 yards. And I must have been vis visibly, visibly and visually, I must have been visibly anxious because Dave Savigny, some of you younger shooters have to go Google Dave Savigny. He was the dominant production shooter at that time. And he said to me, do you have sights on your gun? And I said, yeah, Dave Savigny, of course I got sights on my gun. Good grief, what a dumb question. Use them. Use my sights. Use my sights. Okay. Well, all right. Dave Savigny told me to use my sights. I could probably do that. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. And then when the match was over, I was sitting there drinking my drink at the awards banquet, and Mike Voigt had to call my name three times to come up and get my award for first master because I was not thinking about the results at all. I cared a little bit about the results, but I wasn't thinking about the results all day. And I've realized very recently, okay, regarding caring or thinking about results, if you're properly invested in your mental management flow chart, or if you are getting a subconscious stage plan with positive imprints, you're doing that very actively, you will not be able to think about results for that period of time. It's not possible because you're now thinking about something else, okay? You're thinking about creating a subconscious stage plan with positive imprints instead of thinking or worrying about results. It's pretty dang powerful. So even if you're not able to pre-accept the results, which I highly recommend, for the period of time in which it really matters, creating your subconscious stage plan with positive imprints and surrendering to your point of focus, it won't matter. It's pretty cool. But you've got to walk the stages with positive imprints. That means as you're creating your stage plan, I can do this. This is what I am going to do, and I know that I can do it. I want you to choose pretty quickly and pretty confidently. Okay, Your preparation to shoot your stage plan and your opinion of your preparation of your stage plan is more important than your stage plan. I know you don't believe me because people keep, I had a call yesterday. Well, I, I was doing pretty good and then I'm left-handed. So I thought I should be shooting these stages like a left-hander instead of like a right-hander. My stage plan sucks. And on top of that, we find out that he's now consciously creating quote unquote left-handed stage plans for some reason. And we also find out that he's negatively imprinting his ability to do this. 
right? So here's literally what he's doing. I'm going to go do something different than what was making me successful, and I'm not very good at it. How in the world can we expect to have success? And of course, he wasn't writing in his journal because the only time they ever call me with complaints is when they've stopped doing that because they now, they no longer know what they're doing when they're getting what they want. And to compound it, they're never acknowledging that they're getting what they want. So they don't know what they're doing when, they, when they're not getting what they want. Fascinating. All of this can be solved with positive imprints. And I know you don't like the cure. I know you don't like it. And the more type A you are, the less you're going to like it. Choose a stage plan confidently and quickly and prepare to execute well. And I'll prove it to you. You guys that are worrying about stage plan, you don't get beat with a great, with an A plus execution of a B minus stage plan. You get beat with a B minus execution of an A plus stage plan. And if you're not sure what to do, if you're not sure whether to go left or right, if you can air gun both options fairly realistically, or at least the same way both with both options, you can get hard data whether one is quicker than the other one, right? Literally all you have to do, use the stopwatch on your phone, air gun the stage option B, hit stop when you're done, air gun option A or the other option, hit stop when you're done. And you'll have time. One of them will take you 15 seconds. One of them will take you 13 seconds. Okay, well, this one's maybe two seconds quicker. If it's less than a second difference between those two, and this is primarily in the pre-walk, you're not going to have time to do this uh, during the official match walkthrough. But if you're doing a pre-walk, you should have already kind of figured this out. Meaning you've all, you should have already done this or at least have some idea of, of what you're going to do. Um, if there's 20 stages, I don't think you need 20 concrete stage plans. I think you need to have a rough idea of what you're going to do. And then I think you need to focus on day one, right? Because you'll have half a day. You'll either have the second half of your shooting day or the first half of your next shooting day to, to walk the next six or seven stages, you know, whatever it's going to be. But use a stopwatch to air gun both options. If you're not sure, if it's less than a second, go to confidence. And when we do this, we rarely find less than a second between two viable options. Let's do that again. We rarely find, sorry, more than a second. Let's get that right. We very rarely find more than a second or second and a half between two viable options. You know what that tells us? Execution is far more important. Most of you listening to this program are not inclined to do something dumb. Right? The only time stage plan is a problem is if we're doing dumb stuff, like creating quote-unquote left-handed stage plans <laughs> that, that may not be the right, pun intended, correct way to shoot the stage. Okay, All you got to do is reduce the amount of time spent not shooting. If you have a stage plan with a large chunk of time spent not shooting, that may not be the best one. If you have a stage plan with a relatively low amount of time spent not shooting, that's likely to be better. There's nothing really universal about it, but that is universal. Reduce the amount of time spent not shooting. And remember, the splits are always going to be the least amount of time spent not shooting with the greatest risk of reduction. Meaning, if you're going to reduce the, the, the amount of time spent not shooting between shots on a, on a given target, that is the riskiest and least beneficial place to go looking for that. You're carrying a high risk of a, of a Charlie Delta or a Mike on that second shot to save five hundredths of a second. It's dumb. And I'm not telling you to slow down and get your hits. I'm telling you to shoot good points without consciously slowing down. That's what I'm telling you to do. Now, let's talk about consistency. Consistency, we're going to present this two ways. Number one, the quality of your thoughts and your ability to duplicate them. Have you learned what to think about before you shoot, while you shoot, and after you shoot? Do you know what that is? Most of you don't. If you've been keeping a journal, you know exactly what to think about before a stage for best results, What exactly what to think about during a stage to get the best results. And once we figured out the quality of our thoughts and we've defined that, it's your ability to duplicate those thoughts. That's all you got to do for great consistency. Learn what to think about, be able to control it. It's pretty simple. 
The other way we'll present it is choose, master, and trust. If you choose a stage plan pretty quickly and you master it with repetition and you trust that you have it mastered, that will provide consistency. Choose, master, trust. Heck, you could make that part of your objective. Choose a plan pretty quickly, master it with repetition and positive imprints, and trust it. Trust that it's the best plan for you. Trust that it will be there subconsciously. Trust in your skill to execute it. And in order to keep this thing rolling, you have got to protect yourself from negative environmental imprints. If you hear chatter about a particular stage, oh, you're coming up on stage seven. That's the hard one. It doesn't need to infect you. Somebody thinks stage seven is hard. They're saying it's hard for them. It's not a problem you need to have. If it's got long distance steel, sight and trigger will knock those suckers down every time. Okay? Which reminds me, uh, obviously, there, there should be a sighting bay where you can check your dot. You're obviously going to go do that. I wouldn't go do a lot of shooting over in the warm-up bay. Um, make sure your dot's zeroed. Whatever you're going to do in the, in the sighting bay, I'm sure there'll be one. Whatever you're going to do needs to have 100% positive imprints. If you're coming out of that sighting bay with, with decreased confidence, that's going to be a huge problem. Right? You know, I'm, obviously, you're, you're taking backups of backups. So if something is broken or maladjusted, you'll have a chance to fix it. But you've got to protect the imprints in that sighting bay. Um, you'll see guys over there dumping mag after mag after mag. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know why they're there. Right? Go there for a reason. Define success. Be successful. Get the heck out of there. If you're asked about the match, establish talking points so you don't have to answer the question. How are you doing? I'm getting subconscious stage plans and calling every shot. Yeah, you having, are you shooting good stages? How are you scoring? I'm getting subconscious stage plans and I'm calling every shot. You, I heard you had a mic on stage one. I learned a lot from that. Next time, I will put the dot in the middle of the target. They want you talking about your mistakes so they feel better about their mistakes. You don't have to play that game. They're probably not trying to intentionally harm you, but some of them may be. And you don't need to participate in somebody else's trash talk. If you're looking at the results, a fascinating thing happens when, when we look at results. If you're kind of on fire, you're doing really well, and you want a little peek at the results, and you see you're doing better than expected, that's great! Everybody's afraid of that, but isn't that exactly what you want, to be doing better than expected? All you have to do is revisit what you are doing to perform better than normal because you can create a short-term self-image that makes that behavior normal and you can keep getting it. What I mean by that is if you have had a history of struggling on a type of stage or a type of target or a type of skill, but you fixed it and now you're doing really well on that type of stage or that type of skill or at the match in general, all you have to do is reinforce what you're doing instead of reinforcing the idea that, hey, this isn't me. Because if that's not you, and you don't know what you're doing, that guy won't shoot day two. The old you will shoot day two. This new guy that's getting it right, I don't know where that thumbs up came from. That was kind of weird. My computer screen just gave me a thumbs up. Maybe, <laughs> maybe that means the audio is working correctly. I just got a new computer, and I've literally never seen that. I just got a giant thumbs up on my screen, and I have no idea what that means. <laughs> This giant animated cartoon character, Mickey Mouse glove thumb, giant thumbs up on my screen. I got no idea what that means. I hope that means everything's good because we're going to keep going. That was kind of weird. So I'm going to choose to imprint to my self-image. That's perfectly normal. Now, if you're looking at hit factor for specific stages, for the vast majority, there's only one thing that's important. And that is knowing what a makeup is worth on a given stage. Okay, for example, if it's a five hit factor, you've got eight tenths of a second to prevent or fix a delta 
before it hurts your hit factor. Meaning, if you spin longer than eight tenths of a second, you're gonna hurt your hit factor to, cor to correct that delta. That's on a five hit factor. And a miss is worth three seconds, which means you've got three seconds to prevent or correct a miss before it hurts your hit factor. So if, if you know people in your class are shooting around a five hit factor, you got three seconds to prevent or fix a mic. That's a very, very, very long time. If it's a seven hit factor, your delta is now worth 0.57. And most people cannot observe a delta on a target, see the hole in, in the D zone, and decide to make it up in less than half a second. Most people can't. Now, if you're calling your shots, most people can make up a delta, make up a called delta in 0.57. Called makeups are usually about a 0.4 or less. Some can be much faster than that. Okay, but an observed delta on a seven hit factor stage is really more of a confirmation that it's not a mic. And at a seven hit factor, your miss is worth 2.14 seconds. You've got 2.14 seconds to correct or prevent a miss before it hurts your hit factor. That is a ton of time. On a nine hit factor, your delta is now worth 0.4 and your miss is now worth 1.66, okay? So this is the most valuable information about hit factor for most shooters. I don't really want you to go out trying to shoot a five or a seven or a nine. It's really more like, hey, here's an A-class shooter. He's got a five or a seven or a nine. That tells me what a makeup is worth. It doesn't tell me how fast or slow I'm going to shoot it because I'm going to shoot it as fast as I can see what I need to see. Right? People talking about hit factor, I never, ever, ever hear them advocating slowing down to conform to a five hit factor. That's not what we're saying. And I don't think you should speed up in attempt to get a nine because you're very likely to make mistakes. Right? So let's say, just for sake of argument, that you decide to go out and shoot a nine, but you have a miss. Well, not very smart. Not very smart. The right thing to do is to let the vision control the speed. And that brings us back to the point of focus or the focus phrase. I'm on this new kick now, as you may have noticed, where I'm telling people that the, the two biggest problems in the sport are the conscious control of speed and negative imprints during training. Two biggest problems in the sport. And you won't hear anybody else talking about these two problems. Everybody else is going to tell you, speed up here, slow down there. That's a problem. They're also going to tell you, you got to be hard on yourself in training if you want to get better. That's also a problem. Negative imprints during training, conscious control of speed are the two biggest problems in the sport. And you won't hear anybody else talking about it unless they're copying from me, which does happen. Now, regarding uh, dry fire, I would say that the only dry fire you need to be doing between now and going to the line is match mode dry fire. There's two ways you can do it. Um, you could set up a stage, dry fire it, rearrange it, dry fire it. You could do that. Um, there's really not a part-time in match mode dry fire for performance. Um, I think maybe a better way is to put 10 seconds on your timer as a part-time and dry fire anything you want for 10 seconds. Whatever you want. Okay? Uh, go to 12 seconds. Change it and add time. Okay? Go to 14 seconds. Change it and add time. It doesn't matter what you dry fire. It only matters that you do it for a specific amount of time and that you leave only acceptable shots. This is where you flip on the makeup switch. Okay, well, however you define an acceptable shot in your match mode dry fire, that's your job is to leave only acceptable shots as quickly as you can see them. What a great way to shoot the match, leaving only acceptable shots as quickly as you can see them. That's pretty sweet, that's pretty cool. So that's what you get to practice. And if you want quick makeups on paper, match mode dry fire is where you get them. I wouldn't be making up really close Charlies and match mode dry fire, but for sure be making up wide Charlies and Deltas. Or not shooting them in the first place. That would also be good. And this is also where you learn to shoot great points without consciously slowing down. Right? Shoot great points without consciously slowing down. 
And I know that shooting great points will reduce your speed a little bit from rush, try, hurry. But as long as you don't consciously slow down, you're going to be in good shape. Okay? Regarding the weather. Oh, and by the way, in your match mode dry fire, I think we should do that from 10 seconds up to 30 seconds. And I wouldn't do the same array twice. Okay? 10 seconds, two targets. 12 seconds, three targets. 14 seconds, just keep adding. Put movement in there. Make sure you're practicing going prone. Same thing in your hotel room, right? Pick out two things in your hotel room. Dry fire back and forth for 10 seconds. Now pick out three things in your hotel room. Dry fire back and forth uh, for 14 seconds. And just keep changing it and adding time all the way up to 30 seconds. That's my recommendation. You're not trying to get faster because you don't need to and you don't have time. You're rehearsing leaving only acceptable shots as quickly as you can see them. Okay? Regarding the weather, so June in Ohio is going to be anything but snow and ice. Very unlikely to be snow and ice, but it could be anything else. And I haven't looked at the forecast for those days, but it's going to be hot, it's going to be muggy, and it's probably going to rain. So prepare for that, and then ignore it. If the weather conditions are unfavorable, you can have a huge advantage by ignoring it and not complaining about it. Ideally, you would have already practiced in these conditions. One of my favorite things at last year's CO Nationals on the day it was raining really bad, uh, Nils Jonasson shot in the worst weather of the entire day. I mean, it was raining cats, dogs, kittens, puppies, hamsters, lizards, and goldfish. And I never heard Nils complain about it. Not a word. When he got called to the line, he went up and shot. As I recall, he did pretty good on that stage, but he completely ignored it. Okay? And I need you to constantly be aware of and return to the objective within your control. We talked about that. Subconscious stage plan, singular focus. I will see what I need to see. I'm going to get a subconscious stage plan with positive opinions regarding my ability to execute this thing. Remember, if something's hard for you, it's going to be hard for everybody in your class. If you're an A-class shooter and something's hard, it's going to be hard for everybody. If you're an M-class shooter and something's hard, it's going to be hard for every M-class shooter out there. Your chances are as good as theirs. What I want you to do is replace anxiety with strategy. What do I need to do within my control to be the most successful on this stage? If it's a moving target, what do I need to do? What do I need to do to have my best chances of success on this? Turn anxiety into strategy. Return to that objective. After every run, reinforce what you're doing specifically when you get it right or make an immediate correction within your control. And you will have the best match you can have. Okay? I'm going to be working the weekend of the match. Um, if any of you insiders have my phone number and you need me for anything, you can text me. And if I'm available, I'll text you or call you back. Um, but I will be working that weekend. So... And I'll be traveling all day Friday. But if you need me, text me and I'll respond if I can. Um, please go to andersonshooting.com. Check out upcoming classes uh, for opportunities to save yourself years of struggle in reaching your goals. And until we meet again, be like me. Do what I do. Say it with me. One, two, three. Get to work.